guys, today I'm doing a book review on Champion by Mui Wu, the final, final book of the Legend series. <laughs> Legend series is, if you haven't read a Legend series, you should totally read it. It's not big at all. It goes by super, super fast. You won't even realize that you've read the first two books in like a week and a half. Because it's like, whoa, I gotta keep going with the story. I gotta keep going. It's really action-packed. You never get bored of it. And I so regret not reading it earlier. It's so good. And then I have Prodigy and Champion. And they both feel weird on the cover. I like Prodigy the most. I like my dark covers, and I like Prodigy the most as a book series because it kicks some serious ass at the end. If you want to see book reviews on either of these, I have them. They will be in the links down below. You should go check them out. Okay, now Champion, these two were five star reviews. I love them, love them, love them. Champion was four stars, it dropped down due to some difficulties that I had with it that I just I couldn't cope with. No, you have this whole plot that Day is dying, and I'm like, you know, Day is, is it's not dying. Plus, revealing that a character is dying usually means they miraculously live somehow. We have, we, the whole, we've lost Day. We have lost our pluses, kick-ass Day. In champion he's not like he was in prodigy or legend he's hopeless he has some electric cigarettes that he smokes enough of him gets hallucinations of june and i'm like i don't know what this is this isn't my day this isn't my little fireball i why i can't and june june was like oh i couldn't even fathom june for a few chapters she's princeps Princeps, Alex, something, one of the three, I don't remember what they were called technically. And she's the youngest of the three, and she's close with the Elector, and I just... At first, I didn't mind June being on the political side, because I thought she is a leader. It'll work fine. And then as I'm going through this book, I'm like, can't, I can't, mm, nope. Get her a gun and let her suit something, please. Day gets this call from June, and she's like, I need you to come back for this special day or whatever. And then you flash over to June's point of view, and all it is is the Elector bribing June to bring Day there, because they have to test his little brother Eden's blood. And I'm like, I knew right away it was never going to happen with Day. It was just... It was never going to, he would not lose Eden for years only to we lose him again. The plot was kind of dragging for like 80 pages. As June was sitting there in the court, she was watching Commander Jameson and Thomas be put up for execution. And then they escaped. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, the first prisoners to ever, there were so many cliche moments. One too many. I don't even know where the Patriots were at this point. We had like no mention of them. Had they just disappeared and not cared that literally their continents were being torn apart? We where were the Patriots, man? I knew they didn't want it against the Republic, whatever, but at least ally them with somebody. We threw an Antarctica in here. I was like, whoa. As there's an attack on Denver, and everything's going to hell, and Day gets mad at the Elector because he's not serving the poor sectors, and I got kind of frustrated at that scene, because I get Day's point 120%. The evacuation tunnels were built in the Wits area. It's not like they can just magically make them appear in the poor sectors. There was nothing the Elector could do. I mean... Obviously, yes, he could. He, he did end up opening them to the poor sectors, but it didn't do much good because, like, they had to go all this way and that were in the city would just go, all right, just go down to that block. Let's go down the stairs. Problems. And then we have June and the Elector. This irked me, too. I'm sorry. June and the Elector going to Antarctica. Antarctica has been introduced. I was like, whoa, WTF. We've, I don't, I've never seen Antarctica as a functioning country and they're explaining all this new technology they run their government based off a gaming system <laughs> well, i would have seen like to see how other countries land they're like 
politics and economics and social laws or whatever. Because at first reading about a game system running Antarctica because people were afraid to lose points because they went to score high. I was like, what? And then it dawned on me, you know, it's not like the public, the Patriots or the colonies are doing much better here. What? Ha- where's our Europe's and Australia's? What are you doing? Where, what would happen with you? Would have been cool to see that breakout infection that the colonies blamed the Republic for. It wasn't even supplies. Antarctica is like, not gonna help you. You owe us money. You don't have money to give us. You don't have a cure to give us. You don't have research to give us. We gonna help you if you give us land and that's it. And for elector to apparently give them land is a heinous, heinous crime. And as this new elector who's 20 won and everything, not many people are really behind him. Only reason why is still because of Day. And Day kept threatening that he was going to expose the elector if he did something wrong, whatever. I was just like, stop. Man, he's not your enemy. You don't you don't need this anymore. I got After the first 120 pages, I started feeling it again. Day was going on missions with Posco, and even though he was having breakdowns and you could see... June and him being more intimate because June realized he was dying. A having to be more lenient in the wheelchair. And I liked Eden. Eden was 12 and he stepped up today. And he's like, you know what? This isn't your decision. I'm going to save the entire country. I don't care if you test on me. And as they're testing, the dawns on you that Eden is not it. And I predicted this. Sort of mentioned it in one of my earlier book reviews, but I suspected this so much. Oh, it was June who had the virus. And I suspected it because she just, she was so ill. And I was just. Why didn't I mention it? I could have had factual proof, damn it. As she, her blood is now the cure, and Annika's rushing in to help, there's this big grand finale. Day has been offered his bribe from the colonies, so he goes up to the colony ship, so like, oh no, you gotta go on the ship. Of course you do. So there's this chancellor, and he's making his speech to the people, and he starts so dramatic, like, we've been through so much, and it's been so hard and so unfair. And there's this part where he just looks at the chancellor and he's like but fight for your country and i'm like yes this is the day i know he's he's yes and he's jumping through windows and he has this thing in his suit that causes the window to break and he's jumping out and he's setting off bombs and he's working with pasco and i'm like yay 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 and then it dawns on me this is the one time it's been too far (laughs) i can feel it I think everybody could feel it when reading it. Day had not been happy, and Day's only motivation was Eden or June. But that previous mission of him with Posco, and he was losing his ability as a runner because he wasn't jumping down and sneaking away at the right time and all of that. And that one scene where he's with Tessa and Posco and the others, and they split apart, and they're getting shot at by colony soldiers, and Thomas steps up and dies for the public. Thomas in this book, I was not expecting Thomas to get under my skin like he did. He had this scene with June way back in the beginning when he was talking about when he killed a brother, Medius. And I was like, uh, I don't, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear it. And I was so moved because he said that it was the only, he had no other choice and he didn't know what to do. And he's just, he was panicked, and he did kill him, and even Medius realized in the end that that was the way to go, because they can't start this whole revolution. And he mentioned how he had kissed Medius before everything went to hell, and how he did want to say he actually loved Medius, and he didn't want any of this. And I just, I couldn't believe that I had somehow felt emotion for Thomas after everything. But Marie somehow established that. And then after that disaster mission, you had the big grand finale with Day pulling that air ship jumping, bomb setting off, and he's pushing himself too far. And I'm even just telling him, just stop. Just stop, please. And Posco gets him, and June gets him to the hospital, and he's resting, and then the hospital is getting attacked. And I'm like, no. No, please, no more. And June is running after Commander Jameson, because she's been around. And there's this scene where you can see Day and he's grabbing Eden and he's running. And I, you keep seeing Commander Jameson 
suiting and you don't know if she's hit day or not except for june hearing day's screams and this is all in june's point of view and ah oh, drives me crazy and she gets this gun from a soldier she had taken down and she takes a shot and the one time in her life does she miss was now and i was like stop no, I can't. No, mm, no, you did not miss now. And then her and Commander Jameson are having it out, and Commander Jameson ended up almost flinging them both off the building. And June was screaming at Republic soldiers to suit her and everything, and that to Commander Jameson ended up getting it. But that whole fight scene, it was all physical contact and no guns. And I was like, after the whole book of watching June in pretty dresses or acting formal, I was just like, yes, kick her ass, please. Before she kills her. She knows that day has been sought, and she's running to day, and when she gets to him, she realizes he's been sought in the hip and in the chest, and I was just like, no, because now it's in my head, and I'm like, day's gonna die, and it's not gonna be because of his brain, it's gonna be because of a bullet wound, and there's this scene at the end, I was just full on, my heart was full on pounding, I was full on mesmerized, I was almost in tears and sock reading the scene of June screaming at the top of her lungs and praying to God just to what day with. Let's talk about these stupid time jumps. Damn you, Marie Lu. Start off eight months after Prodigy. We go to the ep the epilogue. Let's, let's get to the epilogue. Okay. I hated it. I just hated it. Five months have passed since Day has been sought. He's been in a coma, he's had his brain surgery, he's he's just in a coma, it's not any better, it's not any worse, we don't know. And you have Tess and June becoming best friends, which I really liked, and you had Eden interacting with June, which I liked. And Doctor comes to June and he's like, Day's awake, and at first he's like, yes, yeah, go, go, and then, because... We're having, I, then when I was reading the scene, it made sense, but I didn't want it to make sense, but it did fit, and I was like, oh. Because June was never going to forgive herself for what she had done to Day, because especially after that scene was he snuck off with Day, and he was sobbing for his family, and even when Day was dying, and he had that hallucination of his mother, and she's like, live the rest of your life well, I was like, because oh. you just, you closed everything up in a big giant bow, Day doesn't remember the last two years, and they explain about the Republic and how he was a leader or not. But then the June is there, and she doesn't tell him who she is, because she feels like it would be better for him. No! No, it would be better for him! No! 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 And I was almost in tears, because it dawned on me what they were going to do. And we skip to the epilogue. Mind my own business, and I turn the page. Ten years later they are not 17 they are celebrating her 27th birthday or at least june is and it got it almost screamed and flung the book because i was like no no you did not let him spend 10 years without you gets this call from tess and she's acting all mysterious and cute and she's talking and june is talking about how she used to date the elective for two years and all of that and i was just like ah i can't mm, no even though we'd seen the elector and her get intimate i was just like i can't you would a couple it was you at day stop it walking by and eden sees her first and then does day and my heart stopped because he's still not gonna say anything to and he's like do we know one another and she's like no and i'm like huh you do you do know one another stop it he walks back to her he's about to walk away and he walks back to her he's like i do know you and then she starts talking and she's like oh your friend you're meeting is tess because i'm meeting her too and then he's like it's you you're the piece i've been missing and it sounded like something that could be in a freaking fanfic and i was just like <gasps> and tears man tears and she's like we can still be friends i'm like stop it stop it to stop and then they shake hands and she felt the bond between them again and that's where they ended it and it was a perfect ending i will say even though i hated it it fit because june could never have forgiven herself watson day more like that 
any manga. And I was just like, ah. Oh. I did give this book four stars instead of five. These two were my five star badasses. This one kind of slowed me down for the first 100 pages, but it was still fantastic. And it's still a fantastic series. And you should read them because they're beautiful. And you should. And it was amazing. I just, I'm reading Marie Lou's other series right now. And I just, just, I'm so glad I discovered this author. I'm Anyways, thank you for watching. Bye!